Hey all, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today I want to take you back to a day in 1894, the townspeople of Bath, Maine, receiving a package in the local post office. It was an unusually shaped package, long and thin. It had arrived from Washington, D.C., and it was sent by a former Confederate officer. Someone in the post office opened up the package, and inside they found a sword, Civil War vintage, with an engraving on it. The engraving said, quote, presented to Lieutenant S. Nash by the ladies of Bath, end quote. There was also a letter inside, and it described how the sword had been captured on the battlefield of Resaca in Georgia 30 years earlier. So the story goes, Confederates rifled the bodies of Yankee soldiers that had fallen on that battlefield, taking anything and everything of value. This was common on both sides during the war. Someone found Lieutenant Nash's sword. He discovered it, and eventually it came to the officer who wrote the letter. One of the citizens of Bath observed, quote, the sword presented to Lieutenant Nash to aid in subduing the rebellion was destined to be used against the power for which he fought, end quote. Now, 30 years later, after the Battle of Resaca, the Confederate officer decided the time had come to return the weapon to the family. That Confederate officer is pictured here. His name is Captain Charles Stephen Hill. He's a native of Baltimore and a graduate of Columbian College in Washington, D.C. He embraced the Southern cause and the right for a state to secede against its government. In 1861, he left his job as a bank teller, crossed over into Virginia as many Marylanders who believed in the South did, and joined the Army. He served briefly as an officer in the 1st Virginia Artillery. Then he accepted a second lieutenant's commission in the Confederate States Army as a staff officer, specializing in ordnance. He soon advanced to captain and thus began a series of primarily ordnance-related assignments on the staffs of several generals, some names that are familiar to you students of the Civil War, and maybe some less familiar, William J. Hardy, Patrick Claiborne, Roswell S. Ripley, and Nathan Bedford Forrest. Captain Hill received high praise for his contributions for the 1863 defense of Fort Wagner and Morris Island, South Carolina. In fact, Hill had arrived in Charleston in the spring of 1863 and was sent to take care of ordnance issues on the island, and he was responsible through the summer, including the July 18th assault on Fort Wagner by Colonel Robert Gouldshaw and his 54th Massachusetts Infantry and other Union forces that attacked that failed assault on that day. Hill remained at Wagner until the fort was abandoned in September of 1863. At that point, he transferred to General Patrick Claiborne's staff in the Army of Tennessee. Hill served in this capacity when he acquired the sword at Resaca, Georgia, as part of the 1864 Atlanta campaign. Historians rate the outcome of that battle, by the way, as inconclusive, although upwards of 4,000 U.S. and 3,000 Confederate casualties might beg to differ. Now, flash forward 30 years, three decades, Hill's good faith return of that sword in 1894 to the people of Bath, Maine, was admirable, for sure. But there was no Maine soldiers who fought at Resaca and no Lieutenant Nash that fit the description. Now, we had a genuine mystery on our hands. 
Meanwhile, the story of the sword's return was published in several newspapers across the country. The news made its way to the Midwest, where the sword had actually been presented to First Lieutenant Sumner L. Nash of the 163rd Ohio Infantry by the ladies of Bath in his hometown of Bath, Ohio. Nash, still alive in 1894, told a very different story about how that sword disappeared. He claimed to have lost it on December 5th, 1864, months after the Battle of Resaca. At that time in December of 64, Nash was on duty at a blockhouse in Laverne, Tennessee, when he received orders to report to Nashville. He left his sword and baggage at the blockhouse. While he was away, Confederate forces under General John Bell Hood attacked and forced the surrender of the blockhouse garrison. Nash returned and never found his sword, never found the package. Now, an Ohio reporter covering the story noted that, quote, the sword that is causing considerable correspondence between Mr. Nash and those in whose possession it is now in Maine, that sword was presented to him by 53 ladies of Bath Township, Ohio. It has a steel scabbard, and in this way, if no other, it is easily identifiable, as the Army regulations called for a leather scabbard for line officers. The ladies of Bath were not aware of this, of course, and then a steel scabbard was sent to Mr. Nash, and he was allowed to use it, end quote. Now, though I did not find a confirmation that the people of Bath, Maine, sent the sword to Lieutenant Nash in Bath, Ohio, the newspaper stories indicate that both sides were cooperating, and so my guess is that the sword was eventually returned to Nash. And wow, I would love to find that sword. What a history behind it. By the way, Sumner Nash, he lived until 1919. Now, you may be wondering what happened to Captain Hill, who did the right thing in the 1890s during that era of unification, the act of returning the sword of a former foe. Clearly, Hill had made an error, but by all accounts, it was an honest mistake. After the war, Hill returned to Washington and went to work as a clerk in the State Department of the government he had fought against. His passion for numbers, remember, he was a bank teller before the war, led to his organization of the Census Analytical Association. That was in 1888. The organization soon grew and became much larger. It was known as the National Statistical Association, and Hill was hailed as its founder. Two years after he returned the sword, he died. That was in 1896. He was widely respected as a government statistician, a big believer in data. His wife and several children survived him. So thanks for listening to this episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. We'll see you on another episode soon.